Let's start with some words that you need to know. Hypo means too little of something. And hyper means too much. In Greek, hypo is low and hyper is high. Hyperventilation means breathing too fast. And hypo Ventilation means breathing too slow. Oxia refers to oxygen. So hypoxia means not enough oxygen in the body. And hyperoxia means too much oxygen. Capnia refers to carbon dioxide. Hypo Capnia means not enough carbon dioxide in the body and hypercapnia means too much carbon dioxide. Brady means slow, tachy means quick and cardia refers to the heart. Bradycardia means a slow heartbeat and tachycardia means a fast heartbeat. Let's first talk about hypercapnia. The most common cause of hypercapnia is taking shallow breaths. Shallow breaths use air from your dead air space, which contains a lot of carbon dioxide. Shallow breathing can occur if you overexert yourself or simply if you don't have a good breathing pattern. You can also experience hypercapnia if you attempt to save air by holding your breath before exhaling. We call this skip breathing. Skip breathing does not actually conserve air at all, because when you hold your breath, carbon dioxide builds up, and this causes you to start breathing faster and shallower. Another cause of hypercapnia is rebreathers. A semi-closed or closed circuit rebreather can malfunction and fail to remove carbon dioxide before feeding air back into the loop. Finally, if you hold your breath for free diving or snorkeling, apnea diving, your body builds up higher levels of carbon dioxide. So you should make sure that you rest on the surface between dives. The urge to breathe is not triggered by a lack of oxygen, as you would expect. But it is actually triggered by high carbon dioxide in your body. Initially, hypercapnia leads to rapid breathing, hyperventilation, shortness of breath, rapid heartbeat, tachycardia, headache, and excessive sweating. Even higher levels of carbon dioxide cause mental impairment and unconsciousness. When apnea diving, you can have problems with hypocapnia, caused by taking too many deep breaths before you start your dive. You can take deep breaths to lower the levels of carbon dioxide in your body. And this delays your urge to breathe, so you can stay down on the water longer. However, it is possible to lower the level of carbon dioxide in your blood too much. And this means that you can hold your breath longer than is actually good for you. Now, at depth, the higher partial pressure of the oxygen in your blood plasma might still be enough for the needs of your body. But as you go up, the partial pressure of oxygen gets lower and lower, and you may even black out because of this hypoxia. This is called a shallow water blackout.
With a shallow water blackout, you will drown if you are underwater or if it happens with your face in the water and there is no one there to help you. This means you always have to practice apnea diving with a buddy and never excessively hyperventilate before a dive. Another thing is the mammalian reflex. When your face is on the water, the heart rate slows to save oxygen. In humans, the heart rate slows 10 to 20 percent, but in aquatic mammals like seals, it can slow as low as to 10 beats per minute. Also, the blood vessels in your legs, in your arms, in your hands and feet, they contract to leave more blood for the heart and the brain. During very deep dives only, blood plasma even fuels the alveoli, so that the lungs are not crushed by the pressure. In humans, this has been observed in on apnea dives deeper than 90 meters. The mammalian reflex is strong in aquatic mammals, but it's also present in land mammals, including us. And children exhibit it more strongly than adults. The mammalian reflex is only triggered in water colder than 21 degrees and only when the face is submerged. 